Last week I did a video blog about the moral failures and sins of Ravi Zacharias that have recently come to light and that have been affirmed by RZIM in an interim report. While I really appreciate the many positive comments and affirmations of the video, there was one that stood out to me. One from a friend named Steve in Colorado. Steve pointed out that I missed something very, very important in my video. And that is that I failed to acknowledge the pain and the suffering and the hurt of the victims of Ravi Zacharias. Those women who offered and gave the massages to Ravi that became a part of his sinful plan to go further than simply a massage. I don't know who they are, I don't know how many there are, and I don't know how long it goes back, but I want to acknowledge today that I am very, very sorry and I repent of failing to acknowledge their pain, their hurt, and the sin that was committed against them and the process that they undoubtedly have to continue to go through even now as this is all being uh, dealt with and investigated. And so I think it's really important for me to acknowledge the pain and suffering and hardship of those who were Ravi's victims. And we always have to go back to that reality that in sin, there are those who have been sinned against and their, their pain is real. Now we all know Ravi, we have a, an appreciation for his public ministry and his person. And so because of that, I think we're mindful to, to think of him and to think of the situation and how it affects us. We don't know these women who were his victims and therefore because we don't know them and we don't have a appreciation for them personally, we sometimes marginalize and neglect their pain. But I want to make that right today and I want to say I'm sorry and I know we can do better when these kinds of things happen. While I should have started out last week's video by acknowledging the pain and the suffering of Ravi's sexual victims, and again, I'm so sorry that I did not. I am led to think about what we can do for them now. And while I don't know their names and I don't know who they are, I can only imagine the pain and the suffering and the, the sense of turmoil they have been in since all of this has gone public. And so I want to really enter into their suffering by praying for them. And I was thinking in particular that we might pray for their healing, their emotional, their physical, and their spiritual healing that they would know the tender love of God in all of this. Whenever you're the victim of an important spiritual leader in this way, you can certainly feel that maybe you did something to make this happen or you did something that you shouldn't have done to bring down this man of God. And that is not true. These women were not uh, uh, wrong to expose and to testify against Ravi's behavior. They were right and courageous to do so. And it's for us to empathize with them and to understand and to pray for them for healing. And not only to pray for them, but to feel their pain and to understand what they have gone through was tumultuous and terrible. And we do, and we need to. I guess the most important thing that we could pray for them as well is that whatever happened behind those doors does not destroy their ability to believe in God and to love God and to know that God loves them because He does even in their pain. And I don't know if anyone, anyone will ever share this video with any one of those victims, but I want them to know that they are loved by God, that His healing is available to them, and that He wants to restore to them their dignity and their respect because they are precious in His sight. And one more thing, what can we learn from this whole experience? Well, I'm reminded that we can listen better. You know, there's a certain amount of incongruity that comes up when people start living duplicitous lives and we begin to see some of the cracks in the wall and we wonder and we're curious and, and maybe uh, there's an accusation here or an accusation there. We need to listen well so that we can begin to see that there might be a problem and we need to deal with that problem early on and, and not let it grow and become a big unwieldy monster in a person's life. So when it comes to these kinds of situations, we've got to learn to listen to those who are expressing concerns and saying something's not right here. We need to listen to them. In addition to listening well, we need to have the courage to go where the evidence takes us. When these concerns begin to be expressed, we don't want to marginalize them or negate them or put them away because these are accusations against a great spiritual leader, a pastor, or someone that we respect or admire. 
No, we need to look at them honestly and see if there be any merit there. We need a whole new era of clean and honest investigation so that we can help those who are serving the church as pastors and leaders and not letting them to get into a place where they begin to hide behind their sins. How hard it must be to accuse somebody who is a pastor or a spiritual leader or an academic leader that you respect and admire. But as we investigate those things, we have a better chance of stopping them before they become full-fledged immoral behaviors and actions. And we can redeem a lot of our leaders long before they crash and burn and self-destruct. The ultimate goal here is to find the truth, to investigate and to know wherever the truth takes us that we're willing to go there. If the truth of a matter is that there's a person who has sinned and needs to be exposed for that sin, we want to go there. If the accusation is false and has been made up, we want to have the courage to expose that as well. In the end, we're all a broken humanity. You're broken, I'm broken, we're all broken. We acknowledge that God's love is real and it's for the sinner. It's for the messed up individual. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And God tells us over and over in his word that he forgives us. So as we seek the truth to understand where our leadership can be vulnerable to sin and failure and where sometimes accusations are made that are not substantive, we will have the courage and the boldness to be a light to the world to say that we're willing to expose the sin and seek the forgiveness of God.